<laughs> All right, Billy Goat for me. Old heads and rugby union. I feel like they're holding the game right back. Yeah, Obviously, I've been cool. traveling around the world, been talking to a lot of <laughs> union boys here and there. And like, but the union boys are really cool dudes. Like, you know, they call them like leagueies, the guys that get loose within there. But whenever you talk to the any union boy, they all say the same thing. Old heads run the game. And it's very like a white collar sport. It's probably seen as a lot more like you go rugby league's blue collar, rugby union's white collar, private school, all those. And then what they basically do is like all the old heads just run it and they just pass the jobs down. So like Ian Foster's basically got the job from um, it's a Hansen who was there yeah. before. But what they do that I don't know how to market to the new generation. We watched the game on, on Thursday and it was fucking mad. And, and rugby union's mad, bro. Honestly, like if it's played right, it's a really cool sport. But they don't have the marketing system behind it to support it. And this is where where leagues grown because got platforms like us and bloke in the bar and all those sort of guys that can create sub medias. And I know there's guys like Pacific, um, what are they called? Pig Pig Athletic Club. Yeah. Yep who do really cool things from there, but it's got to start from the top. There's got to be a marketing machine behind it that tailors rugby league towards the internet, and they're not doing that right now. Now, we're going into the World Cup next year in France, and I was in Toulouse with Normie and um, Stade Toulouse. They're, they're like the big dogs over there. They're basically like the Crusaders. And oh, what's the halfback's name? Dupont? Dupont, like basically he's, he's the best halfback in the world and this is Aaron Smith saying it. Hey guys, what's up? This is a snippet from um, exclusive content that we put behind for our Doozy Club members only. If you're not part of the Doozy Club, um, I encourage you to enjoy it now. Not only do you get exclusive content, we'll be building out new shows, invites to YKTR exclusive events. You're also going to get 10% off your merch all the time and free shipping all the time. So for $5 a week, come be a part of the club. Jumped on his Instagram, the coolest dude in the world. Remember Intermac? Yeah. His son is the first five, so they're going to be the French first five over in France. There's going to be a gun World Cup there. And I feel like we live in a sports crazy nation and we, you guys talk about American sports, but there's a really cool sport here in Union. Uh, fucking really cool dudes with a lot of cool stories and really styly guys that you think of like Quaid, Quaid and Rico and oh, all yeah. those guys. They just don't have the platform to shine in this space right now because the fucking old heads are holding them back. So, yeah, fuck yeah. those Do you heads. reckon that's where the, uh, the angst comes between like – I've said this before with like speaking to Harry Wilson about it, right, from Queensland in, in and around the Wallabies, and it's like it's rugby union against rugby league yeah. against AFL where we've got to change that. Like over in the States, if you find, I always bring this example. If you're from um, Chicago, you go for the Bears, you go for the Bulls, you go for like, you know, like, you know, we've got, we had the Swans reach out to us because we're in Sydney. Like realistically, we should be with Swans and GWS. But when I spoke to my mates about watching – the blood is low. One, they didn't even know it was on. So that's all marketing, that, marketing, yeah, shit, marketing. In that sense. So that's exactly to your point. And two, like all my boys are Western Sydney, like working class background. So when they look at Union, I'm always trying to convince them, like, man, these boys are fucking like, it's going to be good rugby. Like, come down and watch the rugby. They all lived in Bondi. No one would come down the beach road. Yeah. Weasel, Wildy, all my mates. Because exactly what you're saying, it's like they sort of look at it as like rugby league against rugby union. And, and, and the players are different. Like we speak to all the boys and we all like get along with them and, and just say like the Storm boys play um, golf with like the All Blacks and that. Like there's a connection there, but it's from the fan bases. And I think it comes from what you're saying from the older boys. Yeah. The older union boys thinking like maybe they're above us at rugby yeah, league. They do, and they us do. at rugby league over the years just going. <laughs> We think our game's better than yours anyway. So it's it's sort of I think what it's you're always saying, gonna be there. The I think it's always gonna be there. But the thing with rugby union, what's dropped off is like their their club footy system's really, really good. Like yeah, they, they they Beast pull massive stuff, crowds, they pull like even school union pull massive crowds and stuff, but then it's lost somewhere when the boys grow up into like the, the crowds are lost. I mean, it was a sellout stadium down in, in, in Melbourne, but the there's no heroes in rugby union anymore. I mean, there's a few here and there, but like once they start to get that to that status, then somehow fucking a French club signs them, Picks and then them they up. and then yeah. and then you lose that like you know Sonny Bill Quay Cooper. Like I feel like that was the last time where you'd you'd look at rugby union and you'd like right now you wouldn't be able to like really pick someone from the Wallabies or or the All Blacks that you go fuck I want to go to this game because I want to watch this player play. And like to be honest, bro, unless like, you really watch the game, like like, it's, like to yeah. be honest, bro, a lot of the league boys the are average fan. Yeah, a lot yeah. of the league boys are haters on rugby union because we do think our game is better. But whenever you talk to union boys, bro, they they fuck. love league, bro. Yeah. They're yeah. like fuck, league's mad. Like I'd love to give it a crack. They love all Froth these different the styles of yeah. sports. But one thing I've noticed between the Melbourne boys and the Union boys, they're very similar in terms of like they're always keen to learn. They're always keen to ask questions. There's no egos about them as well. And like even the, even though these guys are probably more well known, they are more well known on a 
Yeah, um, international, international stage but they'll sit there come ask you questions go come ask me questions about like different things about business about anything they move like a little bit differently but they're just not as loud they're, as, they're just as loose as us but yeah. they hide it a bit better yeah. I mean, their private school education has got them <laughs> yeah it's a smart yeah. way to go about business right <laughs> oh yeah it's <laughs> long term but um, there are some characters that I'd like to bring out a little bit like I, I guess that's what you're alluding to us like how do in a way, do you know? Do we want to get in that space? We've got to try to find someone to yeah. untap, yeah, we, untap all those resources that we got with all the boys that we communicate with all the time. You know, you had Richie on your one, Simi. Yeah, Artie's um, coming on this week. I'm bro, sp- Artie's po- coming on. Like you've had Artie on before already. I, yeah. so I speak to DMAC all the time. DM him. Bro, they they're crying out for like a media platform just to like let them be themselves. You know, and but it comes from higher up. If the older heads aren't like letting shit slide, and- I think yeah, Pig Athletic does a fucking pretty amazing job at covering like club room club, uh, yeah. club rugby yeah. and and high school rugby is where it needs to start so it need, there needs to be like a stand series around like a there should be like the three best high schools from aussie versus the three best and versus the three best from south africa because the saffers their high school rugby is fucking Insane. crazy it'd be on the same it'd be on the same level as uh new zealand rugby because like new zealand rugby do really really good job at like um putting a, a spotlight on like the up and coming high school players and stuff like that but yeah and, uh, like as the, the rugby australian rugby union sucks at that mm. and it's like they just don't they just they don't want to do it and it's kind of kind of that college vibe about it too because you know what you know what high school they went to as well like our high school rugby um footy is not that big like mm. you see keeper pats whatever but because there's schools that have been around for such a long time like grandma or whatever the fuck it is like hamilton boys you can track their storyline through it as well so if, yeah. if, if, if i know they've got a deal with stan but i'll be building the marketing around the high school the club rugby and then eventually like hopefully you follow those guys' journey all the way through. Then oh, and now he's playing for the Waratahs, and oh, he's got a World Cup coming up in twenty twenty seven. So I don't know. There's a space there that someone needs to exploit. I don't know if it's going to be us, but there's a spot there for someone. Yeah, for sure. Just need mm. the right talent, someone to come over, like yeah. charismatic that's doing it. Yeah. Well, I think once Wallabies, I think once Wallabies start getting some like consistent wins under their belt, the the whole side will pick up because. One, like they don't have a consistent team, you know, every two, three games, they're already, they've got like five new players in there. Like, um, so the players aren't even really getting a good shot at staying in there. Like the coaches get nervous for getting fired. Um, they've had like a bunch of new coaches over the past five years. So I think once they have like a solid team, then people start to watch. Cause like you couldn't really name like fucking five players in that team. Like right yeah, I can't, off, the, I, off the top of your head. If they haven't played league before, like I, I wouldn't be able to name. Like, but back in the day, you'd be like, "Fuck David Pocock, like yeah. James O'Connor, like Quake Fuck, Cooper, Stur- Sterling Mortlock, Digby One, yeah, yeah even like, as Sterling as Mortlock, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah Campbell, you know more, yeah. Manny Rogers, yeah. Wendell on the wing, yeah, because they they just can't. They're not building like heroes within the game. They they like you could name like Foley and stuff like that, but well done. but heroes have to do heroic things exactly, when you're getting yeah. pumped from the fucking All Blacks for <laughs> exactly, twenty years. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Exactly. That's that's exactly. Uh, would we sac- would we sacrifice a loss for for a bit of a- ARU to be on the rise? <laughs> I, know, I yeah. mean, yeah, I, I, I think as well with the the players as well, it's hard for them to market themselves like on Instagram and social media and stuff when they're losing. So it's like hard to you know like. Even with um, KP and those boys, like their podcast was doing really well. They were doing some cool things in that space with like, um, like Mr. Consistent and shit. But because if you're not winning, then you can't go outside and be like, well, you can, but you can. There's, there's a there's a there's a thing where where you're gonna get backlash off the media yeah. and your your manager saying, hey, that's not a good idea to go do a podcast and be all lovey dovey and funny if you're losing. We're over in the states, like. Draymond Green don't give a fuck. Like, I'm in the finals. Yeah, I'm going to do my podcast in the... In yeah, the, I scored the, two points. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, so it's just like... It's 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 once like a, a collective of like players and stuff realise that that they should be able to speak openly and do whatever they want to do on the outside, off the field as well, win or lose. But yeah, it's 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 just that old head mentality because they're, they're going to have the old head mentality media going, fuck, that's not like... Why are they doing that when they've just gone fucking three losses in a row? Do you know who's going to be important over that side of the um, Tasman? I think Artie Savi is probably the guy that can – because one, he's, he's, he's not – like he's negotiating all his own contracts too. He's with he, like Rockefeller. He's with Rockefeller and stuff like that. But he's um he's basically their best player at the moment as well, yeah. like the most consistent over the past <coughs> couple of days. And he sees it. Like he sees this space so clearly and he's in a position to potentially change that as well. So – be interesting to see where where that space goes. Bishy, 
fuck, there's just so much potential there as well. Like yeah, I, like you said, we, we can be fans of multiple sports. Like the Swans were in the semis. We are watching the back half of the final and it was fucking mad. And it's like, I was at the UFC. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm a casual fucking UFC fan, but because Ty's from Western Sydney and I've got to meet him, like, yeah, I want to be there to support him. And he, I, you can get around him as well. So I think that old school mentality of like when, when internet wasn't around and Fox and ESPN wasn't around as, for us as kids where – of course you can have one sport that's your favourite and we're all going to have a favourite sooner or later but now we can be fans of multiple sports and just because rugby like league and union are kind of like similar in, from from a yeah. outsider looking in bro you can be a fan of both I think over in this in the states as well they're, they're open to that and like even the players understand that and stuff like over here I feel like here as well like <laughs> I remember when um I said I go for the Chiefs and all the Auckland Blues boys go fuck you. Remember that? Remember when all the boys got on my ass? Yeah, you jumped on Chiefs when because they were going to the final. That's why. <laughs> <sighs> Come on, man. I've always been Chiefs manner. Uh. But yeah, it, bro, there, there's a there, there's a massive space for rugby union, <clears throat> and I think um, just even seeing Pig Athletic do a really good job at it. Quite um, a quite a be cool, but he's like really vibey on the chat all the time, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, he's a cool guy. Man. <laughs> yeah, tuning into Quaid would be like tuning into Normie. Like, no, 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 no. What? what? It'd be vibey as. Oh no, nah, like no. Nah, Quaid well, speaks well like really, really well. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like he's, he's gonna like, come on the potty. He's uh, no, he's not. Yeah, he's, he's, he's <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, he's articulate okay, in the way that he says things and stuff like that so you need that but then you need a fucking like rap bag as well 